Okay, so moving on to task B2. Okay, it says Brogan has created a chart showing the number of different types of party booked. She wants you to add a suitable title labels for the X and Y axis. So she has created a chart showing the number of different types of party booked. So when you come into the Excel sheet, you can see there is a chart worksheet. And over here, you can see the chart. And if you zoom into the chart, you can see it shows the... Uh, the types of parties and how many times that they have been booked up, isn't it? So we have to put a chart title. We can put a chart title as uh, number of, these are types of parties, right? Let me just confirm again, different types of parties. Yeah, you can say number of bookings for each type of party, okay? So we have got to make it look like a heading. We've got to make it look like a title so we can bold, we can underline it. Okay, and the next thing is the axis titles also we've got to label X and Y axis we have to label so we click on the plus symbol and we click on axis titles and over here this will be uh, double click on this and say this will be party type. Okay, let's bold it control V and this is going to be number of parties or number of bookings actually number of bookings. Okay, let's bold this to make it look like an axis title. Okay, so this is how our chart looks like okay uh anything else to be done no that's it they have told us to resave the spreadsheet as task b1 so we resave it let's click on resave okay right the next thing it tells us is open a new word document enter task b3 your name candidate number center number in the header save the document as task b3 so let's go into our folder and let's right click and let's say new word document which is over here. And the name of the document is task B3. Let's open it up and uh, let's immediately go into the header. Okay, let's immediately go into the header. So double click task B3, your name, your candidate number and your center number. So we close the header and footer. Uh, the first question it asks is answer these questions in document task B3. Explain one reason why absolute cell referencing is used in a spreadsheet. So I hope you do remember absolute cell referencing. Absolute cell referencing is where we lock the address of a cell. So when we replicate, that address does not change. Okay. So let's put the first question. Let's put question number one. The reason absolute cell uh, referencing is used is in order to lock the address of a particular cell that we do not want changing when the formula is replicated, okay? So I hope this makes sense. So like I showed you earlier, guys, when we replicate the formula, if you do not want an address in that formula changing, then what we call, what we do is we lock that cell. We, we select that address and we press F4. So we normally use the word as locking, but the correct technical term to use is what we call absolute cell referencing, okay? Right, the second question goes as, state the purpose of the length function in a spreadsheet. So the length function, if you go to insert function, you can find it, and length function, what it will do is, it will count the number of characters in a particular cell, okay? So say for example, let's 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 take, let's let me type for example, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G over here. So for example, there are, seven characters over here. So using the length function, I can count the number of characters in this cell. Okay, so I can come to insert function and I can search for length, L-E-N, okay? There I go, it's over here. I can take it. So length asks me, okay, what is the text you want me to count? So I say, I just want to count the, the values in this cell in F21. Okay, and also it tells you what it does. Can you see it returns the number of characters in a text string. This is the purpose of the length function. You can simply copy and paste this into your answer. And you can click on OK. So it tells you that there are seven characters in this cell. OK, so you can simply put over here returns the number of characters in a text string. OK, and finally, the last question is explain one reason why an automated date and time field is used in a spreadsheet. So in our spreadsheet, we did use an automated date and time. 
Okay, so what could be a reason? You could say a reason is for it to be accurate, to it to be exact. Because if the user is to type it, they may make a mistake in the date or they may make, make they may put in what do you call it? Uh, they may not put the exact time. They may put a time that is close. Okay, say for example, now we have started at 2 8. But if I was typing it myself, I might simply just put 2 p.m. It will not be the exact accurate value. You get it by putting an automated date and time, you get the exact, accurate, uh, precise value. You get my point. Okay, so you can write that. You can say so that so that the exact precise date and time is recorded if the user is to manually type it they may put a, a date and time that is somewhat close to the real date and time okay so if you are typing it you may put something close okay you may put 2 p.m instead of 2 8 but if you get the computer to insert it the computer will, is going to give you the exact date and time okay so that's that's a reason to use the date and time function okay right uh with that we have then come to the end of uh spreadsheets next we move on to task b4 and task b4 is to do with mail merging where we'll be using microsoft word and that will be our final activity in this uh, practical paper okay so i hope it's going well i hope it's making sense for you okay and uh, see you in the next video